fans, and that's Tom Pecora, coach at Zach and Chase here in Philly. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. And Calipari has really done a sensational job with this team. This was a group that's been inconsistent. Uh, they haven't met up to expectations throughout the year. But once March got going, this team really took off, whether it's Harrison with the clutch shots, Randall, and his low post play. Uh, how did Calipari get this team going at the right time? Well, I think John showed great patience with them. You know, when you have a team like that that's that young, uh, with a half size uh, freshman, I mean, you know, early in the season, uh, mistakes are experienced. And I think he lived with them, uh, understanding it was, it was part of the growth process for them. And I think, you know, they had that roller coaster season with some tough losses uh, in conference play. But the potential and obviously the talent is still there. And I think what they're doing now uh, that, that's so impressive on, on a lot of levels is their effort plays are just incredible. I mean, they're really hurting people on the offensive class. And then that's really just commitment to offensive rebounding, chasing the basketball. And, and obviously they have great overall team size and great athleticism. But I think it's a wonderful coaching job by John because, he, he, once again, he, it, it's all about timing. And it's about being the best team when it matters late in the season. And he didn't overreact early to some of their setbacks. And he has a rigorous task going up against his UConn defense tonight. Uh, they're coming off a game where they only allowed 54 points up against M MSU and also 53 up against Florida. What does Kentucky need to do tonight, though, if they're going to want to break this UConn defense and get into that 60-70 point range? Well, I think they need to take care of the basketball. You know, the turnovers could be the key to tonight's game. You know, as college coaches, we, you know, we always talk about backcourt play and, you know, we say in guards we trust. Uh, well, you're going to look at the two twins, the, the freshmen, going after you know Napier and Boatwright, who are underrated defenders. We played them last year, and, and they really can get up and under you and into you. And uh, even though they may not be creating steals, every pass is just off a little bit. They're great at deflecting the basketball, harassing the ball handler. And I think if Kentucky turns the basketball over, that could lead to some easy UConn hoops in transition. And, uh, and if UConn scoring the basketball, getting organized defensively, like any team, I think they become even more of a challenge for you. But the backcourt ball pressure will be a key. Fordham head coach Tom Bacora joins us on the hotline, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. Gelbin Chase here with you. Coach, it's Chase. Thanks, for, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Calipari has really embraced and perfected this one-and-done rule, bringing in the Harrison twins and also bringing in Julius Randle and all the other recruits he's brought in the last couple of years. What are some of the uh, secrets about becoming such a, a valued recruiter in college basketball? Well, number one is being a Kentucky helps. Yeah, I mean, you know, the resources in Kentucky are incredible, but John's, uh, you know, history as a recruiter goes all the way back to when he was an assistant coach at Pittsburgh, and, uh, you know, he did a wonderful job there. And then as he moved on and, and turned the UMass program around, and, and then at Memphis after coming back from the NBA. So, uh, you know, he's as good as it gets when it comes to uh, recruiting players and, and explaining to them why they should be part of his program and how he's going to help them develop. And, and that, uh, you know, that shows by the number of guys he's put out and put forward into the NBA. So I think that that's a key for him. But And also, like I said, Kentucky is, you know, one of the top three or four premier programs in the country year in and year out. It's been that way for the last, I don't know, 60, 70 years. So, uh, you know, the resources are there. And I think John is very comfortable with coaching uh, all these young players because he knows they are the most talented players in the country or, or part of that group. So I, I think that makes it special for him. Aaron Harrison's shot and big game situations have been brilliant so far in this tournament. What can hitting a big shot in such a big game do for a player's confidence? Because Harrison's got to be walking on cloud nine right now. Yeah, and when, and when you look at that possession, obviously I was, I was up top looking down at it from a box. And, I mean, Wisconsin did everything right. You know, they took away, they, they got loaded to the basketball. They took away triple penetration, which was their number one concern. And time was running down, and, and he just said, all right, I'm going to elevate and knock this one down. Obviously, his size helped that process, being at about 6'3", 6'4", where he was able to get the shot off a tough contested three. And, and then that comes down to hours in the gym right there, guys. That's why those two young guys were special players, and every school in the country wanted it, uh, the twins. You know, they... They have the ability to make special plays, and they're big-time players. And, and at the end of the shot clock, to elevate and make a jumper like that, I mean, that's something that goes down in basketball history. 
I was watching Julius Randle's highlight tape when he was coming out of high school in Texas, and I was simply amazed at how athletic he was at 6'9 and the weight that he has. How difficult is it to guard a guy who is that big, that girthy, and can dribble up and down the floor, shoot from the outside, and also bang down low with some bigs? Yeah, that's why they call him pros. You know, uh, he reminds me, I'm showing my age, Wayman Tisdale, who was a great player at Oklahoma, uh, you know, lefty as well. And that adds to the uh, to the problem because just by nature, you know, people are accustomed guys going over their left shoulder. And then you play against these big lefties and they give you a little shot fake and they come back over their right shoulder and score it. But he doesn't have many flaws in his game, obviously. He's got the ability to put the ball on the floor. He can make jump shots. But when he goes after uh, rebounds, whether it be at the offensive or the defensive end, I really think as his career moves forward, that's that's really going to be something he's exceptional at on the next level. He he has a nose for the basketball, and he can really make plays. We're talking to Tom Pacora a few more minutes with the head coach of Fordham, and I was seeing John Rossi, and he actually tweeted out that when Kentucky walks into the hotel lobby, it looks like a pro team, and we all know that they're going to send a lot of people to the NBA. We saw that a few years ago with the Calipari team that won the championship, and you look at this team, you see the one-and-done rule. I don't like it for college basketball, but you can't blame Coach Cal for it. He's perfected it. Uh, Does it ever amaze you, though, when people have a problem with the way Calipari recruits, especially on the one and done route. No, I mean, look, where everyone's going to play to the rules, and uh, and uh, you know, what are you going to not recruit them? You know, they're the finest players in the country. If Kentucky doesn't take them, someone else will. Uh, you know, they'll be at Duke, they'll be at North Carolina, they'll be at Villanova, mm-hmm. they'll be at Arizona. So, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's going to be one of those scenarios. So, uh, that would be silly to think otherwise. And if they change it and make it a two-year rule, or they go back to allowing players to come straight out of high school and go play. Uh, everyone will adjust, and, and and their recruiting philosophy will change. But uh, you know, John's uh, you know John's doing everything that needs to be done to get those players to come in, and they he now has a body of work with these one and done players is very appealing to them. Obviously, when he goes and he speaks to them as high school players, and says, "Look, I, I know how to do this. We as a program know how to prepare you in one year to go on and have successful NBA careers," and I believe that's what he's selling. One thing UConn's going to have to do tonight if they want to win this game, they're going to have to find a way to keep Kentucky off the glass. Kentucky's one of the best offensive teams rebounding the ball in the nation. What does UConn need to do to try to take away these bigs tonight for Kentucky, especially down low? You know, once again, it gets back to basics. You know, up on the boards, back on the D. So, I mean, they've got to put a body on everyone and just outwork them. You know, offensive rebounding, rebounding in general is 80% effort and 20% technique. So they want to go out and make sure they put a body on them, not give them any clear path to get the ball off the backboards. It's got to be a one-shot game for Kentucky. If they miss, you know, the ball's got to be secured by UConn. And in turn, that will allow UConn to get out and run. Because when you get the ball in those little guards' hands, in the open floor, they are really, really tough to stop. So uh, that's going to be a key. It's going to be there's going to have to be very, very physical, especially early on in the game. I think the kind of whistle that UConn gets when the game becomes physical on the glass will be key, so they don't have to go too deep into their bench. But this is part of uh, Kentucky's uh, game plan: is to beat you up on the backboards. And the great advantage of that on the offensive glass is you know you can come down and not be shooting the ball well, but then. Uh, you know, because of your offensive rebounds, you're getting great looks usually on rebounds. Uh, you know, your offensive rebounds, you're going to get a layup or a dunk, or you kick out, you can get some very good looks at threes, or at worst, you kick it out and make that team have to defend for another shot clock rotation. So, uh, you know, a lot of teams, ourselves included, we always keep stats of our defensive field goal percentage, and then our defensive field goal percentage on a second possession for the opponent after they get an offensive rebound, and it goes up drastically. So that's going to be a key for UConn. I'm sure Kevin Ollie's telling him we've got to control the paint in the class tonight. And whenever anyone talks about UConn, you're exactly right. They mentioned the guard play between Napier and Boatwright. But DeAndre Daniels has really been a big part of this team throughout the tournament. What has impressed you the most, though, about their big man? Well, I think their toughness. Uh, the other day against a very good front line of Florida, their, their physicality and their toughness and their discipline. You know, they didn't bite for shot fakes. They stayed home. Uh, and then they put bodies on uh, on the Florida players who are similar to some degree with Kentucky in their athleticism. You know, Young's ability to get to the backboard and things of that nature. The other thing is they really battled and they forced all of the baseline players for Florida to make catches outside of what we call prime time, outside of the paint. So they, you know, they, they had to take a couple dribbles to get into their area where they could score the basketball. They're going to need to do that against Kentucky as well. 
this run for UConn really reminds me of the run they went on a couple of years ago when Kemba Walker uh, was just on fire throughout this whole tournament. I've been so impressed with Shabazz Napier over the course of his career. He's had a chance to to possibly go pro uh, the last couple of years, but he stuck with this program and stayed loyal to UConn. What do you think about his, his pro prospects? Because he's straight business, not a guy who is on Twitter like a lot of these other athletes. He takes his job very seriously. He has that clutch gene, and he's also an underrated defender as well oh without a doubt i mean he's you know he's iverson like in his ability to score the basketball from the perimeter or around the basket while still being undersized but you're not going to find a a tougher competitor than him he really goes after it every game every possession of each game and i think him staying in school made a difference he could have been one of those guys if he had come out early to uh, you know to not get the opportunities he would have gotten in, in the pros you look now and see how well kemba's doing down in charlotte And early in the the tournament, prior to it starting, Kemba was quoted as saying, this team reminds me a bit of ours in their uh, their, their willingness to sacrifice for each other and and play hard every possession and and play within themselves. They know who needs the basketball, where they need it, and who they're depending on to make the plays they need to depend on. And and obviously for him to be able to stay and and work with Kevin Ollie, who had a great NBA career, who was in the league, you know, I believe, 11, 12 years, uh, that can only help his preparation for the next level. And and Boatwright is a great compliment to Napier. He's a little bit of a different style of guard. He's a, a better slasher, gets to the cup at will. What makes him such a good compliment to Shabazz Napier? Well, just that. I think that, uh, once again, by his dribble penetration, they all play off of that. And, you know, so often at the end of games, people will look at the stat on the bottom of your box score and say points in the paint. Well, years ago, that was getting the ball into bigs and having them post up and score for you. In uh, basketball right now, uh, in college basketball, that's guard penetration, big people stepping up and either a shot going up and getting an offensive rebound because everyone's rotating, or off the rotation, a guard laying the ball off to a big for a high percentage layup or dunk or that guard getting in the late and scoring. And Boatwright does all three. So once he gets teams moving and they have to all respond to him getting in the lane with the basketball and being a scoring threat, good things happen for UConn. Last year with Louisville, Hancock was a guy who could knock down the three ball and really extend the floor and have the defense focus not just on Siva and uh, and the other guys, but on Hancock as well. Giffy kind of adds that dimension to UConn. How important is it to have that shooting presence on a team? Well, it's great. Even on nights, like the other night, you didn't get a whole bunch of them uh, as compared to uh, the game prior, but you know. When, as coaches, we, you know, we watch film till our eyes bleed. So we know everything that the opponent wants to do. And all it takes is a couple games for a good shooter to knock down four, five threes. And then and from a defensive standpoint, you're going to make sure you, you're not too far from them on every possession. And with that said, that creates spacing. And offense is all about creating space. So by having shooters on the floor, they extend defense, they create space. And that's going to allow those two little buggers in the backcourt there to go make plays. A few more here with the head coach of Fordham, Tom Pacora, as we get ready tonight for the national championship game between Kentucky and UConn. And Kevin Ollie had to replace a legend at UConn and Jim Calhoun, and he's done a really remarkable job going through this. And he's a young coach. He has that professional experience. But what's the toughest part when you are a younger coach and you're trying to succeed? Because Ollie's really ran with it here with this UConn team. Well, I think what Kevin's done a wonderful job of is being Kevin. You know, he didn't go in and try to be Coach Calhoun. He was himself, and, and he had great confidence in himself and the way he was doing things. And obviously, uh, you know, Jim was a great influence on him, and the way they do business each day is probably quite similar. But at the same time, uh, he, he was entrenched in the Yukon tradition. He got a chance to see first, you know, firsthand by being an assistant with him for a couple of years before he took over some of the adjustments he might have made in the way he does business since the time he played for him. But I think the most impressive thing is Kevin has come out and he's been Kevin. And he's had that self-confidence uh, and still stayed humble. He has that UConn swagger, but at the same time, he's very professional. You see the way he is on the sidelines, the way he carries himself in interviews. He's done a, he's done a, very, one, a, a very good job for a young first-time head coach. On the way out here, whenever anyone in the tournament is an eight seed and they make a run, they bring up that Villanova squad. And Kentucky, hey, they're not an upset story. We know they had the talent all along, and Calipari has really done a good job getting the best out of his players. But you know Raleigh Massimino very well. Uh, We're in Philadelphia, but how much did he mean to your career and become the coach that you are today? Everything. 
you know, Coach Mass, who I was with this weekend in uh, in Dallas and spent a lot of time with him, uh, you know, myself and Jay Wright were his assistants out at UNLV, and, uh, you know, he gave me my chance. I was uh, uh, teaching in middle school and, and coaching in junior college part-time, and, and Coach Mass uh, took me under his wing and taught me every aspect of this business. And, uh, you know, he is like a second father to all of us. Uh, I, I talk to him once or twice a week. And uh, and that game is still uh, a very, very special time. I mean, that was the first Final Four I went to in 85 because I'm a New York guy and St. John's was in it. So some of my buddies had, had St. John's season tickets, so we went down. And I was up in one of the last few rolls up there in, in uh, Rupp Arena watching Coach Mass win that national championship, that Villanova team upsetting Georgetown. And then five, six years later, I was working for him. So it's uh, it, it, it changed my life in a lot of ways, and I'll always be indebted to him. He's a great man. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time today. Thanks so much. Enjoy the game tonight, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you, guys. It's always a pleasure. Tom Pacora right there, the head coach of Fordham. We'll take a quick break, and when we get back, Brandon Matthews will join us to talk a little golf here as we get ready for the Masters this weekend. 